Hi, I'm Ted Reeder, Executive Chef at President's Choice. Welcome to the President's Choice Surefire Seafood Grill Guide, a definitive and up-to-the-minute guide to grilling everything from succulent salmon and swordfish steaks to green tiger shrimp, scallops, and much more. Before I introduce you to our collection of truly inspired and absolutely delicious new recipes for seafood on the grill, I'd like to tell you a bit about what we call the President's Choice Seafood Story. Here at President's Choice, we take seafood very seriously. Our standards, as for all the products that bear the PC insignia, are very high, and our goal is to provide quality fish and seafood. For instance, our swordfish and tuna are lying caught instead of the usual trawler net method, which results in less bruising or discoloration. Because they are packed in ice, processed and frozen very soon after being caught, their freshness and flavor is preserved right away. And specific shipments of seafood, shrimp, swordfish and salmon, undergo rigorous inspections to make sure they meet our President's Choice standards. We know you rely on PC seafood products for consistently good quality that results in great tasting, nutritious seafood choices. And speaking of nutrition, you'll notice that these days just about all our new President's Choice products, including most of the fish and seafood items, now include our new easy to read nutritional charts. You know, even the most seasoned shopper and cook are a little intimidated about buying seafood. So throughout this video guide, we will also provide you with the most important things to keep in mind when selecting fish and seafood. Well, the grill's all fired up, so let's go over and get started. I'm going to demonstrate to you six surefire seafood barbecue recipes, all with some accompanying side dishes. We've got a lot of great recipes in this video, but we can't demonstrate all of them to you. So you're going to find the recipes in this booklet. Why don't we get rolling with this thing now? Here we are at the President's Choice Barbecue. This is one massive barbecue. It's just incredible. Got it up to about 650 degrees. And to do our first recipe, you're going to need to get your barbecue up to that temperature. This is hot, so stand back a little from it so that you're not going to burn yourselves. First recipe today is cedar plank salmon. And you're saying, what is this cedar plank salmon? Well, it's a cedar plank, 10 inches wide, 12 inches long, and 3 quarters of an inch thick. And you soak that in water overnight. 24 hours is the best. You know, if you're, if you're in a hurry, you can go four to six, but my advice is go 24 hours. And you're going to place that straight into the barbecue center, right here like that. And we're going to add a little bit of sea salt. That's going to help draw the flavor out of the wood and put that straight into the salmon. Close the lid, and you're going to let that stay there for about two to three minutes until the wood starts to dry out and starts to crackle. And you're also going to get that beautiful aroma of the tandoori, sorry, of the... Uh, cedar plank coming through. Talking about tandoori, what is this tandoori? We've got tandoori plank salmon. We've taken fresh Atlantic salmon fillets and we've marinated that in our President's Choice Memories of Cashmere Tandoori Sauce. We've marinated this for four to six hours and if you want to let it go a little longer and get more flavor into it, 24 hours is great as well. We've added a little bit of chopped shallots and we've topped it with a piece of uh, fresh coriander and that's going to go straight into the barbecue. So let me grab my tongs. You're going to need those. You're also going to need to have a little bit of a squirt bottle. These squirt bottles are important. If your wood catches fire, you're going to want to put that fire out. So I'm hearing a little bit of crackling. There it is. We're going to open it up. Wood started to dry out. And we're going to take the salmon fillets. You're going to place four of them directly on the plank, just like that. Oh, voila. This is gorgeous. Close the lid, and you know, today for this recipe we're using this lid. For all of our other demonstration recipes, we're taking the lid off because we want you to see everything that we're doing. But you need the lid for plank salmon. It's going to retain all that smoke, it's going to retain the heat, and you're going to like plank it, grill it, and bake it all at once. It's going to take about 12 minutes in there to uh, medium, medium well doneness, and that's just what you want to have it, full flavor and juiciness. So let's let this go. We'll come back to it in a few minutes. Well, we're just going to check on our salmon. Make sure that when you open the lid, you stand to the sides where the smoke and the heat doesn't blast you in the face. Wow, does that look good? We're going to close the lid, and let this cook for another two to three minutes, and it'll be ready. You wouldn't believe the aroma coming from this barbecue. The smell of the cedar and the tandoori sauce, it's just incredible. So let's give our salmon a final check. Oh, yeah. It's done to perfection. Just pull that out of the barbecue. I'm going to set it on top of another plank so it doesn't burn my table. And there you have it. 
memories of cashmere, tandoori plank, salmon. It's incredible. And you know, you should serve this with grilled asparagus, with a green peppercorn Dijon hollandaise. It'll be an incredible meal. For our tandoori plank grilled salmon, you'll need four salmon fillets, each about six ounces and about one inch thick. A third of a cup PC Memories of Cashmere Tandoori Sauce. Four tablespoons PC shallots or red onion finely chopped. Fresh coriander sprigs, one lemon cut in half, coarse salt. For our next recipe, we're gonna do fresh arctic char grilled whole with oregano, lime, and fresh crushed garlic. Oh, it's gonna be incredible. So, you know, we've got these beautiful arctic chars here. I'm just gonna pick this one up. And you know, when you're buying whole fish, you wanna get fish that have beautiful bright eyes, firm flesh, shiny skins, and pinkish gills. Those are the best. And you know, you don't want them to be, well, that fishy smell. You want them to be fresh, just like the sea. It's incredible. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to swipe down the fish here both sides. We're going to score each side of the fish three times, almost down to the bone, about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch deep. We'll do it on this side as well. And that's one. Bring this next one to us. Each of these arctic char, and they're just amazing, weigh about two pounds, about a kilo each. Down, down, down. The reason we're doing this is so that the flavors, when we marinate these, are going to get right into the flesh and into the meat. Incredible flavors. We're going to take a little bit of this roasted garlic olive oil, just brush it all over into each of the cavities, like that. Do this one here, that side. And we take our mixture of fresh chopped garlic and oregano. Just put that into each of the cavities there. You can even do the inside of the fish so that more of the flavors get in there. Like that. Flip it over. There we go. Now what you're going to do with these after you're done, you're going to put them in a dish and you're going to marinate, let them marinate for about 30 minutes. You don't want to go any longer because the flavors are going to get a little too intense and the marination is actually going to start to cook the fish a bit, and you don't want to be doing that. You want to let the barbecue do all the cooking. So you put that aside, you wipe off your hands, and you get started. After it's marinated for 30 minutes, you put it into a barbecue grill basket, a fish basket like this. Put a few slices of lime in there, some oregano sprigs, and then onto the barbecue. We've already got these started. I'm going to flip them over now. Oh, it's looking incredible. And one last thing. When you put them on the barbecue, take some fresh lime juice, just squeeze it all over. You get the flavor of the lime in the fish. You're going to cook this for between five and seven minutes per side. Flip it over, continue again, and it's going to be incredible. And you know, I like to serve with the Arctic char, some balsamic marinated green onions. And you know, they take about two to three minutes and you got to keep turning them frequently and you just want them until tender. And you know, we also love to serve this thing with some grilled rustical bread and arugula salad. It's light tasting and just a wonderful addition to a great meal. The Arctic char with oregano and lime requires two whole Arctic char, PC roasted garlic flavored olive oil, one cup fresh oregano chopped, four cloves, PC fresh peeled garlic finely chopped, a quarter of a cup freshly squeezed lime juice, salt and freshly ground pepper to taste, fresh herbs and lime slices for garnish. Our next recipe is a grilled swordfish tortilla with a shrimp and papaya salsa. Now I've already started the swordfish steaks here. I've seasoned them with a little oil and salt and ground black pepper put them on a medium-high barbecue, and we're just going to cook them for about three to four minutes a side. You know, if you're going to buy some fresh steaks, whether they be tuna, swordfish, shark, or marlin, make sure that they're firm, they're moist, and they're shiny. You don't want to be anything that's this opaque-looking color. Also, if you're going to use frozen swordfish or tuna steaks, 
make sure that there's no freezer burn on that product. So anyway, while these are cooking, let's get making the shrimp and papaya salsa. We're taking a package of shrimp, which we've thawed and drained, two papayas, which we've peeled and seeded and diced, a half a diced red onion, half a diced yellow pepper, and if you didn't want to use yellow, you could use red or even green. About a quarter cup of chopped coriander, and three tablespoons of lime juice. Oh, that's good. We need a little bit of salt and pepper in that. And to finish this recipe off, you have to have a little bit of memories of Jaipur passion fruit and curry sauce. It's just awesome. About a quarter of a cup of that. Now, just give this a mix. Then you're going to cover this and you're going to put it into the refrigerator for two hours so that all the flavors are going to come together. It's a pretty delicious thing here. It's a great salsa. It's also, you know, you could serve this in a half an avocado if you just want to make this as like a salad. But this is going to make a great tortilla. And I actually have one already done right here to marinate so that all the flavors have come together. We'll flip the swordfish over. Now, when you cook these swordfish steaks for about three to four minutes aside, you're going to have them completely cooked all the way through. All right, our swordfish is almost done. Our salsa is ready. We're going to throw on some of our flour tortillas. I like to use my hands to move them around, feel the heat. I'll bring up one of the swordfish. Finally, give our tortillas a flip. These are the Esplendido 7-inch flour tortillas. You know, if you want, you could use a bigger one to make a heartier tortilla, but this is just where we are. Whew, that's ready. Let's slice our swordfish just across. Put a little bit of the swordfish down the middle, like so. Generous amount of salsa. Shrimp and papaya salsa with Jaipur. And let's just roll that right up. And there you have it. Grilled swordfish tortilla with a shrimp and papaya salsa. And it would be great with a Key Largo couscous salad. Unbelievable, quick and easy barbecue meal. For our grilled swordfish tortillas with shrimp and papaya salsa, you'll need four PC swordfish steaks, six ounces each, thawed, two tablespoons PC canola oil blend with olive oil, eight PC Esplendido flour tortillas, each seven inches, salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. For the shrimp and papaya salsa, you'll need one box PC cooked cold water salad shrimp, thawed and drained, two ripe papayas peeled, seeded and cut into half inch cubes, half a red onion chopped, quarter of a cup fresh coriander chopped, half a red or yellow sweet pepper finely diced, three tablespoons fresh lime juice, a quarter of a cup PC memories of Jaipur curry and passion fruit sauce, salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. In this next recipe, we're going to be doing some grilled green tiger shrimp with fiery Thai and lime, served with a Key Largo pesto. We've got some grilled vegetable kebabs with pineapple and memories of Singapore. And we're going to serve this all at the end with a tex Matty rice salad. So why don't we start off with getting the vegetable kebabs on the barbecue, because they're going to take about six to eight minutes, so we're going to turn them a few times. They're quick and simple. We've got some sweet peppers, multicolors, some pineapple, some eggplant. We've soaked our wooden skewers and skewered them up and marinated them in memories of Singapore. Really simple. So for the green tiger shrimp, we're going to need to make the marinade, the fiery Thai marinade. We've got one pound of thawed green tiger shrimp. Here we go. We're going to take some fiery Thai, about three tablespoons worth. It's like that. Dash more. Three tablespoons of canola olive oil blend. Tablespoon of freshly squeezed lime juice. Two tablespoons of President's Choice alfalfa honey. One tablespoon or one medium-sized shallot diced. 
a little salt and black pepper, and two teaspoons of soya sauce. Give that a mix, and then you're gonna pour that over top of your shrimp. Mix it together. And you're gonna let that marinate for about 45 minutes. You don't wanna go any longer than 45 minutes because the shrimp are gonna start to cook in the marinade, and you wanna do all your cooking on the barbecue. So we'll just put that underneath. Now we've got some already skewered and marinated. And I've also reserved a little of the marinade for some basting. I'm gonna start these off on the grill. The grill is on medium high. We've got about four shrimp per skewer. And these are only gonna take about two minutes per side. You wanna get them nice and bright and pink. And they'll be firm and just delicious. Now, I've soaked these wooden skewers in water for about an hour. If you're gonna use wooden skewers, make sure you soak them so that they don't catch fire on you. If you've got metal skewers, even better. And we'll just give these a turn, these pineapple and vegetable Singapore kebabs. Based, not too bad. Quick and easy, pick up the reserve marinade, the fiery Thai and the lime and the shallots, a little soya sauce and honey. Baste them. This is a real spicy dish. It's got a lot of zest. Flip this over. This is so fast and so simple. You know, skewering them, or if you've got a grill basket, it's even better. Put them all in one basket, you can turn it once. But trying to cook one shrimp at a time is just insane, so don't do that stuff. Skewer and basket, always. Make it simple or keep it simple is the rule. And there you have it. Grilled green tiger shrimp with fiery Thai and lime. We're gonna serve that with a Key Largo pesto. And this Key Largo pesto, it's got basil and mint and coriander in it, roasted cashews, memories of Key Largo and Parmesan cheese and some oil. It is just an incredible thing. It's zesty and full of flavor and life. It's just amazing. It's a great accompaniment to these shrimp along with the vegetable and pineapple kebabs. And you know, we're gonna serve this all at the end with uh, tex Matty rice salad. Just incredible. Enjoy it. The green tiger shrimp with fiery Thai and lime requires one box PC zipper back colossal green tiger shrimp for the grill. Three tablespoons PC memories of Thailand fiery Thai dipping sauce. 3 tablespoons PC canola oil blend with olive oil, 1 tablespoon fresh lime juice, 2 tablespoons PC premium alfalfa honey, 1 PC shallot finely diced, 2 teaspoons PC naturally brewed soya sauce, freshly ground black pepper to taste, 4 skewers. Here's a contemporary twist to a classic sandwich. It's called a grilled Nova and cream cheese sandwich, and it's done on President's Choice, extra thick sliced five grain bread. We're gonna start this off by taking some old fashioned cream cheese. And you're just gonna nicely coat the bread. You wanna do two slices of bread for sure. There we go. Top this with some smoked salmon. Bay of Fundy smoked salmon, that is, President's Choice. And you know why they call this Nova? It's because the New Yorkers love Canadian smoked salmon, especially that Bay of Fundy smoked salmon. And they call it Nova in all their fine restaurants and delis and places like that in New York. So we're just gonna put the smoked salmon on. Lots of this here, about two slices per side. And then we're gonna take a few tablespoons of diced red onion, same amount of dill and some chopped capers, add a touch of salt and pepper, mix it up. We're gonna top each slice with this mix. This is such a fun sandwich, it's amazing. You know, here's a little tip for you. you know, some people might be wondering why salmon has that bright, vibrant orange color, and that's because of the tiny little shrimp they eat. It's amazing. All right, a little there. Get over to this side. And here. Bam. Just a little brush. And now we make the sandwich. Take that, slap it together. There we go. Wham. This is a lot of fun. There we go. 
we're going to take and brush the bread with some canola olive oil blend and put that right on the barbecue. And it's going to take about two to three minutes per side to grill these sandwiches and you want the bread to be nice and lightly charred on both sides and the inside just to be warm. So now we've got this going, we'll brush this side so that we're ready for when we do the flip. Okay, the grill is preheated to medium high. I'm just gonna come over here. There we go. Oops. Take too long. Doesn't take long at all. Take this one off here. This is one of my favorite things. Take the knife, slice that in, and a great thing to serve this with is President's Choice Memories of the Queen Charlotte sauce for salmon. It's just amazing. And also a great fiery corn slaw. So, bon appetit. Mmm, that's great. For our grilled Nova and cream cheese sandwich, you'll need half a red onion diced, two tablespoons of capers drained, two tablespoons fresh dill chopped, eight slices PC extra thick sliced five grain bread, half a package PC Memories of Winnipeg cream cheese, eight slices PC Bay of Fundy smoked Atlantic salmon, a quarter of a cup PC canola oil blend with olive oil. You know, another great way to barbecue fish is on papillot. And that's, in simple terms, in foil or in parchment paper. When you're doing fish in the oven, you know, sometimes you'll put it into parchment paper to retain all the moisture and the delicacies of the fish. We're going to modify that and put it on the barbecue with parchment paper and foil. And that's, we're going to use sole today, but you could use catfish or cod or orange roughy, other delicate fish that normally don't barbecue really well. So to start off, we're, we're going to do the side dish, which is zucchini and antipasto. And we've taken some zucchini and sliced them, some President's Choice uh, 12 vegetable antipasto, and uh, some red onion. We're just going to fold this parcel together. We've got the foil, and we've got the moistened parchment paper. And we bring the ends together, fold it like that, down, and just fold up the edges. Just nice and snug. And we put that onto a high barbecue. I've already got one started here, and uh, it takes about uh, 10 to 12 minutes to have that completely done, and it's perfect. Next thing we need to do is, for the sole on papillot, we're going to make a topping of shrimp and leek and red pepper and memories of Provence. So we'll slice a little julienne of red pepper. And then we have some President's Choice fully cooked black tiger shrimp and we've uh, taken the tails off of those and chopped them up. I have about 12 shrimp here diced up. And then a little bit of leek. Some memories of Provence, and this is a great sauce for pasta and for seafood. Lots of herbs and tomatoes and cream and Parmesan cheese in that. And then we just need a little bit of seasoning of salt and coarsely ground black pepper. Move that out of the way. Just gently mix that together. I've started a few on the barbecue earlier because this is just a fun recipe and we've got lots of people here who are hungry, you know. Got to eat. Then we take a piece of foil and I've taken also a sheet of parchment paper. I've moistened that with some water. I'm going to take approximately six ounces worth of sole fillets. These are each about two ounces, so I'm going to use three. If you get larger ones, you'll only need one or two. Place that in the center. Take my shrimp, leek, and Provence mixture. And just place that on top. And then again, fold up like a nice little parcel. Bring the edges in, bring it together, snap it down, fold in 
the sides and roll it up. And again, place that on the barbecue. So I'll pull off my zucchini. Oh, that's hot. I have burnt fingers, so I'm used to it. And we'll show you what our zucchini looks like. All done there. Zucchini and antipasto. And then we need our shrimp and sole on papillot here. Whew. Now you might want to use gloves or you could cut it open or use a pair of scissors, but I'm just touch used to the heat. And there you have it. Zucchini and sole en papillot with uh, a great salad, you know, would be of northern beans and French feta cheese as an accompaniment. Great summer meal done on the barbecue, ready and easy for you. Provençal sole and shrimp on papillot requires 12 PC jumbo cooked black tiger shrimp thawed, tails removed, and roughly chopped. One red pepper cut into julienne strips. Half a leek slit lengthwise and rinsed thoroughly and chopped. One cup PC memories of Provence pasta and seafood sauce. Salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. Four sheets of parchment paper, 10 by 12 inches, soaked in water. Four strips of aluminum foil, 10 by 12 inches. Four fresh sole fillets, about six ounces each. As I mentioned earlier, we knew we wouldn't have time to demonstrate every single recipe in our PC Summer Collection, but let me take a moment to show you a few additional dishes. Here we have the tuna niçoise salad using our succulent PC tuna steaks that are ready for the grill. The terrific grilled scallops that are wrapped in PC naturally smoked bacon. Our PC Pacific cod fillets that we have pan fried in a cast iron skillet. And this, our absolutely fabulous new PC salmon burger that we've used to create the best clubhouse sandwich ever. So easy to put together that you don't even need a recipe. We've simply grilled the salmon burgers, drizzled them with memories of the Queen Charlottes and stacked them with bacon, lettuce and tomato on our new Gigantico buns. Think of this video and enclosed recipe booklet as your own personal guide to grilling seafood and fish. Once you've familiarized yourself with our techniques and tried our recipes using President's Choice Fish and Seafood, we think you'll use them as inspiration to design your own trademark dishes. So have yourself a surefire grilling season. It's never been easier or more delicious.